Hey guys, welcome you back today for another video, and today we finally have the reveal trailer and some information, official information, regarding Hazard Zone. So we're going to run through that. I'll have the trailer playing in the background. I'll also put the link for the trailer down below. We also have a blog post over on Battlefield.com, which I will link. And we also, on top of that, have a podcast which was released, which gives us some more information about Operation Steadfast Refuge, which we're not really sure what that is yet, but it ties in to hazard zone somehow this could be a continuation of the zone of the future an additional mode be added maybe a free to play element we'll have to see so jumping right into it as the trailer is playing in the background we did also see some new weapons here we did see a shot of the nc-42 which we'll go through here in a little bit later on and we saw some additional shots of the flux defense mp-17 and some other weapons which we've already seen like the pkp pesad egg bullpup scar h things like that which will run through near the end of this video so jumping into hazard zone itself so what is hazard zone hazard zone obviously is going to be kind of like a tarkov type game mode which we've discussed here in the past however the official description over on the battlefield website basically states that in the year 2042 how this ties on with ties in with the lore of the game is in 2040 the blackout of 2040 caused 70 percent of the satellites in orbit to malfunction and fall down through the atmosphere and crash into the earth. So communication, navigation, surveillance were all crippled, bringing the already tensious relations with Russia and US to the brink of war. So in response to this, in order to gather intelligence, basically both of these superpowers deployed low orbiting satellites, which would have to be programmed to crash and that would need to be manually retrieved because it was the only secure way to do so. Now the blog post, or I should say the podcast, gives us more information into all of that. And that's something I definitely recommend listening to. I'll link that down below in the description also. It gives you some really cool insight um, into the actual conflict going on and some interviews with the operators or specialists themselves. So what is Hazard Zone? What do we do in Hazard Zone? What's the purpose of this mode? So basically, what we want to be doing in Hazard Zone, you have five core elements to this game mode, that being strategize and equipped insert retrieve extract and then gather your rewards so this mode honestly looks like a lot of fun i think unfortunately it is not going to be free to play as of now which could potentially be a mistake but we'll have to wait and see what plays out with that so in hazard zone first off you navigate in the hazard zone so you need to get in get the goods get out and you're going to get rewards which are going to be dark market currency i believe is what they're calling it so this is going to be an in-game currency system that you use to equip your soldier, uh, buy certain specialists, buy certain weapons, attachments, things like that, equipment, grenades, all of that to go in more prepared. You're also gonna get a bonus when you extract multiple games in a row, you'll get is what it called something along the lines of an extraction streak, and then everything will be reduced in price as long as you keep extracting. So there's also gonna be tactical upgrades available at launch, there's gonna be 15 of these. We've had some of these released or data mine by temporal. Now, some of these are going to be extra throwables, so that'll allow you to carry one of the selected throwable, one plus the selected throwable or gadget that you're carrying with your specialist. Insider information is gonna allow you to see the landing position of these satellites 30 seconds before they arrive. Loadout insurance will reimburse 25% of upgrades and loadout costs if you die. Negotiated bounty, 50% dark market credit bounty when killing opposing forces and quick draw holster is going to allow you to swap to your secondary 15 percent faster so first off let me state this this is a pvpve just like we discussed in the past so player versus player versus environment so here on consoles or the next gen consoles ps5 and also pcs it'll be a 32 player on last gen it'll be 24 player so what you'll have is squads of four going in against each other here if one squad to themselves no team play outside of that and you're gonna be fighting no pats or other no pats or AI on the map, which will also be protecting these satellites. So you're gonna to have to fight these AI as well as it's gonna draw in the enemy who hears these firefights. You're gonna draw in opponents, other teams and to your location. If you're engaging AI to get the satellites, be prepared because you're gonna obviously be drawing attention to yourself. Multiple satellites will be crashing at once and then you'll have two opportunities to extract with the data drives and now the more data drives you collect the more dark market credit you're going to earn if you're able to all get out with that so you'll have two opportunities to exfil and those will be marked with a with green smoke exfil locations and then, like i said there's only two exfils so in this 
part, you'll either have to get in, and you'll have two options, basically, a risk-reward component here. You can get in and get the data drives right off the bat and exfil immediately, or you can risk staying around and killing other teams and getting their data drives and getting more points. So that's a risk-reward element to that. Obviously, if three of your members are able to exfil and you're stuck behind, you're going to have to exfil with the last, the last extraction, which, again, you could potentially kill your squads and get their drives, or you could fail and lose. I think all four of you need to extract in order to complete. So if three exfil and one ends up staying and dying, I think you all uh, get penalized for that. So you'll be inserting and deploying a landing zone. You'll be use a scanner in the unique hazard zone to search for downed capsules, and that's how you'll know where these are. Dead drives are obviously protected by AI occupying forces that will be roaming around the map randomly. Um, and you'll have to fight them as well as the opposing squads also. So when you retrieve the data drives, obviously, like I said, you'll have two opportunities to exfil. Now there's also gonna be support uplinks on the map. So there's three types of support uplinks, those being uh, allowing you to call in a ranger, which is that robotic dog. You have a vehicle uplink, which will give you a LA TV4 recon call in. It's gonna be basically that uh, light armored Jeep essentially. And then you'll have a redeploy uplink, which will allow you to bring back dead squad mates so when you have to get those specific uplinks it's not one uplink there will be three separate uplinks randomly that will spawn on the map at different times and if you need to revive downed teammates you'll need to find the redeploy uplink and use that one specifically so it adds a nice element of revive to the game here and again you can use that redeploy uplink and bring back all three of your squad mates if all three are dead and it's just you running solo you can bring them back and then use something like loadout insurance for 25 reduced loadout and you can go ahead and probably get your stuff back at one of these stations as well there will be ammo spots all around the map they'll be marked clearly so you can get more ammunition in case you're running low and then like i said the first extraction window you'll be able to get out you can get get the drives get out if you miss that window once that first extraction window closes then there's going to be the environmental forces there's going to be the storm coming in so a hurricane some sort of environmental effects that levolution like we saw in the beta with the hurricane will start to pick up and that will peak right around the second extraction. So if you stay around for that second extraction, you're going to need to fight the elements, that being the in-game dynamic weather events that are gonna be occurring. So you'll also have a really nice, uh, I guess, loadout starting screen here, which will allow you to strategize on the different map. It'll allow you to see what map it is on since has zone takes place on all seven maps. You'll be, it'll allow you to strategize and it'll show you where uh, give you, I guess, forward intel as to where some of the data drives are suspected to be, where some of the other squads will be deployed, where the AI is suspected to be. It'll allow you to kind of form a strategy with your squad. Now, you can only have one specialist per squad of a unique specialist, I should say. So each of you has to pick a unique specialist. You can't have duplicates, and you'll have to complement each other with what weapons, what gadgets, things like that you guys bring in to the hazard zone in order to extract and fight the other team. So as the storm approaches its peak, like I said, with that final extraction window, that's when you're gonna have to fight the environmental factors also. So you'll be able to just have time to strategize and formulate your plan before you go in. Games will last anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes. You can get in, get the drives, exfil in five minutes, or stay around for around 20 minutes if you choose to use the second exfil. Now, progression will be cross progression throughout all the modes. And like I said, when you do exfil successfully, you will get this DMC or the dark market credit, which will allow you to uh, equip more attachments, buy different weapons, different specialists, things like that. Now you will gain overall uh, level ups through this zone or through hazard zone as you will in traditional multiplayer in the portal. So it's all cross progression. Um, you'll also have hot streaks, which will be available for different specialist extracts when you extract consecutively enough X amount of times, you'll earn extraction streak marker tied to the chosen specialist that you've been using. That will reduce the cost of weapons, equipment, tactical items, things like that, as long as you continue to use that specialist. Now, that's really all the information. The developers did a little bit of Q&A on the blog post as well, which again, you can check that out. Things like how many AI are going to spawn. It's really very random. There's always going to be AI that'll be in different locations, so they're not just going to be guarding the uh, satellites all the time. So. I think overall the trailer looks really cool. The art looks really cool. I like the loading screen. It reminds me just a lot of uh, Warzone. That starting strategy screen reminds me a lot of the Warzone or Modern Warfare type menu screen where you have your soldiers and your squad uh, with the background featuring the map, which I, I really do like that. It's giving you information like data drives that were collected, enemy players killed, 
total drives extracted, players revived, things like that. It's giving you all the match summary information and then your pregame information. You'll get the pregame intel to formulate your plans as well. So that's Hazard Zone. I'll link that blog post down below as well as the podcast, which I say gives us more information on something called Operation Steadfast Refuge, uh, which is just more into the lore of this whole Hazard Zone of the Battlefield 2042 lore in general. Now, Head Zone, again, this thing, it looks really, really fun. You see a lot of different maps here. We get uh, key gameplay here on, on a variety of different maps, and Head Zone will take place on all seven maps at launch, which is pretty big. Good to hear that. And again, we did see some new, a lot of new information here being weapons and even specialist skins. So coming out of the beta, the specialist thing was a big controversy. I think everyone was complaining how everyone looked the same. We did see a lot of new specialist skins for the different specialists, such as Boris, Wyatt, we saw, or uh, Webster, I should say, uh, Boris and Webster, we saw a lot of different specialist skins. We saw, I saw a lot of uh, unique camouflages on some of the soldiers and specialists there as well with di different digital patterns, something that reminded me of like a Spetsnaz red pattern on one of the specialists as well that we saw some shots of. So this is gonna be really fun. These satellites are gonna crash. It looks like a good, if you're a fan of Tarkov or Hunt Showdown, this is kind of for you. It's more of a risk reward element to the uh instead of your typical br this has more of a risk reward you really choose how you want to play this you can get in get out or you can get in and stick around and try and kill the enemy squads if it's worth it to get out with all the extra data drives and again you just got to make those one of two x fills and fight out the other squads in order to get there so it looks like a lot of fun like i said some of those skins we saw for boris look really really cool so we can tell there's going to be this is going to be part of the battle pass element it's going to be a lot of different operator skins or specialist skins uh to uniquely i guess change up so we don't have the same webster mckay on all of the uh the maps but a lot of cool looking special skins now we did see moving to weapons we did see a brief shot of the new nc42 we did see this previewed with the hud on the bet and the beta trailer a few weeks back so we saw the nc42 and we saw the hud element of that the hud photo of that so we do see it displayed here in the beginning of the trailer. We have what looks like Boris and one of his new skins holding that NC-17. Now I know Temporal is gonna release some information about this later, so I won't uh, step on his toes with anything here, but I will go through what the, I think the weapon is. Um, now this is indeed, first off, I would say it looks like more of a Tavor, Tavor 7 or Tavor 21 with some sort of key mod M-Lock handguard on there. However, uh, per the information, this is actually a Russian weapon. So. A Russian weapon is going to be a Russian bullpup, and now this reminds me, so that takes the the options of this being any sort of Tavor, F90, anything like that out if this is a next generation uh, Russian bullpup design. So basically, I think it would be influenced by that, and we look at things like an AK bullpup, whether it's a Kochevnik or anything like that, there's AK-74s have conversion kits, and they've had conversion kits all the way back to the Norinco, I believe, AKU-94. There's been conversion kits for different AK platforms to convert them to bullpup designs. And then we also saw things like the, uh, like I said, the uh, the Black, there's different different conversion kits out there. Black Storm, I think, is one that looks very similar to this. However, obviously there's some glaring differences with the fire controls on this weapon in game not being typical Russian fire controls. We also see something like the, in 2013, the AS-1 and AS-2 assault rifles, which were uh, shown to be in development within Kalashnikov Inc. Um, those were experimental designs that never really took off. They were supposed to enter into the Ratnik trials to compete with the AK-12 at the time, but I'm not really sure what happened to those weapons. However, the AS-1 and the AS-2 are two bullpup designs in 5.5 by 39 and 762 by 39. Uh, those really disappeared. We only have one photo of both of them, so it's hard to tell. It seems like DICE has taken liberties with kind of basically the AK conversion kits for bullpups and the AS1, AS2, as well as obviously taking a lot of influence from the Tavor series of weapons, as well as the F90. So it kind of seems to be a combination of everything there. It looks like a really nice looking weapon. I'm excited to get my hands on this and see what it fires. In the trailer, it's really hard to tell what kind of magazine feed it's taking. It seems to be, it looks like some sort of PMAG, potentially in 545 by 39 it looked like a standard AK-12 magazine. However, there's really no way to tell. You have a, just a very brief shot of the upper part of the magazine. So it could just be a standard PMAG of 556 by 45. No way to really tell. Now we also did see the Flex Defense MP-17. This is basically a, turns your, think of a Glock into a PDW. So it's basically a new chassis system that your pistol fits in. 
uh, turns your pistol into a PDW. So we did see shots of that in the HUD as well. So let me know down below what you guys think. A lot of information here, and it's still it's, some elements of this are kind of unclear. There's still some question marks, and I don't think we're gonna know fully until we dive in and get our hands on this. But let me know what you guys think. This is gonna be refreshing. We're gonna have a lot of different options here when it comes to playing Battlefield 2042, whether it's the All Out Warfare, the Portal, and Hazard Zone. I'm really looking forward to this. This is kind of that Battlefield competitive type uh, game mode, which they've really been trying to nail for a long time. So I'm really looking forward to this. I think this is definitely going to be fun to play, especially if the match matches at most are 20 minutes. And like I said, they can be as quick as five. So this should be a lot of fun, especially looking forward to seeing all the different weapons that we don't know about yet in the game and more about this NC-42. So till next time, this is Buffer Gaming with the Hazard Zone trailer and all the information. Till next time, Buffer Gaming, out.